Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizer to invite us to present here, even if I did that two days ago, but it's always good to be back. <laughs> So uh, first, I will start with our mission. And maybe, I mean, the way we define our mission is to develop and to deliver uh, lifelong uh, cures for diseases where it's important to intervene early in the life of the patients. And we intend to do that by using therapeutics which uh, are capitalizing uh, uh, on uh, two booming worlds, which are gene therapy and gene editing. And you have heard about that a lot today. So what is good about coming to this meeting is every company is unique, you know, and, and they are more unique one to the, to the other. So uh, let, let me uh, give it a try. So first, uh, we have been incorporated about 18 months ago. Uh, we came out of the stealth mode uh, a few months ago after raising our second uh, round of $45 million after an initial seed investment. And uh, we also, uh, after incubating the company in, in uh, La Jolla, we decided it was not a good place uh, to develop this company because of the weather, and we, we just moved to Boston. You know. <laughs> so that's where we are unique, I think. You know. So, but mo more seriously, uh, we have uh, two technology platforms. Uh, one, the one we call GeneRide, and I will give you more details, obviously, uh, later in this presentation, is a very differentiated, promoterless, nucleus-free AAV platform, which, uh, we, with, with, with which we are do, doing uh, uh, genome editing, and on which we have a pretty good uh, IP position. The second technology platform we have is basically a library of uh, innovative uh, uh, engineered uh, vectors with very specific uh, characteristics. And by combining these two platforms together, uh, we can target many indications. This uh, science has been developed uh, in Stanford, at Stanford in the lab of Mark Kay, who is known for his work, pioneer work, in gene therapy and RNAi. So what do we do with this platform? I think we, based on uh, uh, the work which has been accumulated to date, uh, we have a unique ability uh, to treat patients early and, and, uh, and, and in a safe way, and especially before they uh, trigger some uh, non-reversible sequelas. We have demonstrated the platform in more than five, actually, uh, proof-of-concept uh, animal disease models, and I will show some of them. And uh, it has been done in-house, but also uh, with uh, very uh, talented academic uh, collaborators. And uh, when you are, I mean, after this 18 months of uh, development, we think we are now on a pretty fast path for the clinic and the proof of concept in humans. So the team is now uh, composed of 14 people, uh, mainly based in Boston. Uh, we have a small research lab in Tel Aviv in Israel. The scientific founders are uh, obviously very, still very involved. And uh, we, have, uh, we have the ability to uh, uh, access very, I mean, leaders in their respective field. And the data, some of the high level data I will show, has been generated in, in, in the best labs, I mean, for each disease. Um, and we are very lucky to have great investors who have given us uh, enough money to take the company to the next stage. <clears throat> so I wouldn't dare uh, educating this crowd on, the, on gene therapy and gene editing, but uh, I would like to uh, draw you, I mean, maybe take a minute to draw your attentions uh, to the limitations of the technology. Despite the huge project, pro progress which has been done over the last five years and maybe decade in, in both fields, uh, we, on the gene therapy side, and what I call gene therapy, classical gene therapy, which is promoter-driven or episomal expression, uh, we are still struggling with uh, the long-term uh, protein expression, especially when you are targeting dividing cells. Uh, we, many people, and, and I'm talking here about AAVs, but we move to AAVs because they are known and no, as non-integrative integrating vectors. Nevertheless, there are more and more uh, papers sh showing that you could see sometime uh, some off-target integration uh, with AAVs, which unfortunately could lead to uh, some carcinogenicity at some point. Now, if you look at uh, gene, gene editing, and I define that here as nuclease-mediated, 
Obviously, I mean, there are great promises, and I'm sure this technology will deliver a great drug for, for patients in need. But nevertheless, uh, I think we, we are some challenges to deal with. Uh, most of the nucleases are um, um, uh, bacteria-derived, sorry. And uh, so potentially, you, you are adding up a, lay, a new layer of uh, immunological challenge. Uh, we are using promoters, at least the people who have decided to deliver these uh, technologies with AAVs. And to date, there is not a lot of uh, clinical experience. So what we are doing with GeneRide is basically taking advantage of what has been done and see how we could uh, improve it. So we have developed this promoterless, nucleus-free genome insertion technology. And uh, we think it's very safe the way we do it. Uh, we, uh, we have a specific uh, integration of the therapeutic transgene thanks to uh, a construct which is harnessing a naturally occurring process known as homologous recombination. And by doing so, by integrating into the genome, we think we will uh, establish a very long-term uh, um, protein expression, even in dividing cells. And this technology is usable or compatible to many different uh, AAVs. Most of the work which has been done to date, and I will show today, uh, is, uh, has been done in targeting the liver, but you can imagine many other organs or target tissues. So here is the construct, and I don't know, maybe, oh, sorry. So basically, I mean, it's an AAV, which is characterized by the uh, ITR on both ends. But I, I would look at our technology in three components. The first one is the capsid, and you can tweak, uh, I mean, or tune the capsid depending on uh, the tissue you want to target. As I said uh, before, I mean, we have done a lot of work in liver, but we are now, now exploring other uh, capsids. The second element is obviously the transgene, and you, you change, the I mean, you adapt the transgene to the disease you want to treat, the, the type of protein or enzyme or antibodies you want to express. And last but not least, which is our, I mean, the uniqueness of our technology, we are flanking this transgene by a small peptide, but more importantly, uh, by the, some homologous, uh, homology arms, which are uh, fostering, uh, or harness, I mean, fostering this uh, integration into the genome. So let me uh, show you a little bit of what we have uh, uh, demonstrated to date. Um, yeah, the first indication which has been uh, published in Nature uh, a couple of years ago, actually, is in Hemophilia B. And in a very specific model of Hemophilia B, as, as I will show you on the next slide, it's in neonate mice. The second indication which has been uh, published now is uh, with an academic partner, and that's something we have replicated in-house, is in Krigler-Najar, uh, which is a rare uh, metabolic disease. And here you can see the red line is a survival as, as, at 12 months. Uh, so all the mice are still alive, and were still alive at the time, and uh, uh, while the non-treated mice were all dead at 18 days. You know. So I think it's pretty impressive data. We also presented at ASGCT this year uh, some interesting data in MMA, where we are showing, I mean, uh, good survival of the mice in different models, but also uh, some reduction of so some toxic metabolites. We have also presented, and it's going to be published very soon, uh, some interesting data in alpha-1 antitrypsin in combination with another technology developed by one of our academic partners called Dual Vector, where you can upregulate one allele and downregulate the other one, which could be very interesting in some specific patient population. This one has not been published or presented to date, but I, I mean, we like it a lot. It's a way to go beyond rare diseases, even if our focus is very much on rare diseases today. But it's in infectious diseases where, in a specific model, we have shown interesting expression of uh, neutralizing antibodies. So maybe a few more words about uh, hemophilia, which has been the, 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 the first uh, uh, model we, we targeted, and St Stanford, actually, the team at Stanford decided to focus on. It's, uh, I mean, as I said, I mean, you may not have seen many data targeting neonate, neonatal mice. And the reason why is because they grow fast, and as the liver grows, as you know, with canonical or classical gene therapy, you lose the protein expression. What you can see in the blue, on the, on the left side, in the blue window, we have over here 20 weeks, but we have longer, more extensive data. Uh, but you can see protein expression, I mean, the factor nine expression between five and 20%. And, and more, I mean, what, what is interesting also in this data is that 
uh, week eight, uh, we did a partial hepatectomy, hepatectomy uh, where we took two thirds of the liver out and we let the liver grow again. And as you can see, we, we, we come back to a very interesting uh, uh, protein expression. You would have used this uh, mice model with uh, canonical gene therapy, and it has been done by some other academic labs. You would have seen a protein expression, a peak of protein expression at seven days, but nothing left uh, at uh, 21 days. So definitively, I mean, I, I, we believe that GeneRide is an interesting technology to target young animals here and young patients pretty soon. So, I mean, good segue to the sweet, sweet spot. Huh? I mean, Obviously, we are interested in severe diseases where intervening early is important. Uh, we are uh, initially focused on the liver and for monogenic diseases where there is a clear physiopathology and more importantly, where there are good and validated animal models where we can prove, I mean, test the technology initially. And we, we, we are now at a point where we believe that we have a pretty fast path to approval, and I will show you some timelines in a minute, and also uh, some opportunities for the pediatric voucher. Which could, so here is our pipeline. So as many uh, young people, I would say, we don't like to disclose too much about ourselves. So, so I'm not going to tell you which indications we have prioritized, but what I can tell you for the first one, the development candidate has been identified. We are currently uh, starting uh, IND enabling studies. Our goal is to file for an IND sometime mid-2019. It will be a first in class, uh, and uh, I think we will be the, the first uh, gene therapy, genome editing company targeting this disease. The second indication, we already have a lot of data also on this uh, indication, and uh, will be happening six months after. And here might not be the first in class, but we will show a pretty uh, differentiated uh, competition. The third one is something we, it's an indication we are interested in partnering. And um, I mean, as I've been told, I'm running out of time uh, soon. I, I won't, I won't uh, talk too much about that. All these diseases are part of inherited metabolic diseases. And then we, we have a, a, a slate of diseases which are slightly different where we are now uh, developing, I mean, doing a lot of discovery work in, some, with, in the liver, outside of the liver, and with different type of uh, cassette or construct. So as a summary, I would say we think we have a unique opportunity to create a new class of uh, gene-based therapeutics for uh, early onset uh, rare diseases. Uh, our platforms are pretty unique. Uh, we think the safety is very good. Uh, the indications uh, I mean, some of them are be, have been identified. There is a number of indications you can target. I mean, you, you can address by targeting the, the liver. There are many more indications you, we, we could go after, and we, that's where we are interested in uh, um, um, developing some partnership in other tissues. Would it be CNS, muscles, or I mean, we can be creative about that. And good uh, IP um, portfolio. We are currently enriching, but we started with something very strong and a good team uh, already, but we are hiring, and feel free to send us your resume if you are interested. Thank you very much.